Now, sometimes one of those interruptions is when somebody wants you to do something for them. They're going to ask you to take on a project. Now, I recognize that for the vast majority of us, uh, we want to be helpful. We want to say yes to things. So I'm not talking about saying no to everything. I also know, though, that every professional at some point in time is like a plate spinner. And you probably have seen a plate spinner at, on TV or at a circus or what have you, and they spin plates on a stick, and they keep adding another plate and another plate and another plate and keep them all spinning. And most of you probably identify with what it's like to be a plate spinner. And sometimes with a plate spinner, in fact, it's almost inevitable that they will add one plate too many. And then everything crashes. So sometimes it's not only in our best interest, it's in our organization's best interest. If, our, if we're busy, if we don't have any more bandwidth, we've got to learn to say no. It's very important to recognize that there is a way to say no with tact, with finesse, and in a way so that you still come across as a team player. So we're not just simply talking about, hey, no, you know, no is a complete sentence. Yes, it is a complete sentence. You can just say no. Somebody says, would you help me with this? No. You can say that. You don't owe anybody any explanation. You don't owe anybody anything more. However, if you want to have some tact and finesse and be seen as a team player, we typically have to do a bit better than simply uh, no. So here's a four-step model for saying no so that you don't feel guilty but still come across as a team player. The first is to acknowledge the request. Somebody comes up to you, asks you to help with the project, you can say, hey, I know this is important and that you could use some help. Notice you didn't say use my help, you don't want to take ownership, just use some help. And then you decline. I'm not, I'm not able to do so. I know this project is important and you could use some assistance. I'm not able to help you. You gotta be really clear with your decline, by the way. Sometimes uh, we wanna say to people, what part of no did you not understand, the N or the O? The part of no most people do not understand is the part that we don't actually articulate. We beat around the bush. We say things like, well, I'd love to be able to help you. And then we're shocked, literally shocked when they drop something on our desk and, oh, okay, here you go. Like people here, I'd love to be able to help you. And they take that as, oh, a big old yes. So we want to be very clear with our decline. And then we give reasons. Now, it's important when you give reasons to be brief. One or two reasons will do because the more reasons you give, the more it's going to sound like you are making excuses. I know this project is important and you could use some assistance. I'm not able to help you right now because I have a deadline of my own to meet. There it is. By the way, um, this is part of why your plan for the day comes in really handy. Because often your know, reason is something that's on your plan for the day. One of the things that Stephen Covey taught me that I believe is very powerful is that it is easy to say no and not feel guilty when you have a bigger yes burning inside. I'll share that with you again because it's so powerful. It is easy to say no and not feel guilty when you have a bigger yes burning inside. So one way to think about saying no is to reframe it, to think differently about it, and to think not that you are saying no to their request, you are saying yes to your priority. It's thinking differently, isn't it? It's not that I'm saying no to them, it's that I'm saying yes to my priority, because here's what sometimes can happen. Somebody can come up to you, their hair's on fire, they're in a panic, and they ask you to help them with something, you say yes, because you really don't know how to say no, or you feel guilty about it. You put your project, whatever it is that was on your must-do list, gets put on the back burner, you wind up staying late, and at 5.15, they've rolled out, they're gone, and you're gonna be there till seven, because you spent your valuable time helping them, and now they're rolling out the door on time. It's really important to recognize that that's gonna breed some resentment, some hostility, Sometimes we've got to be able to say yes to our bigger projects. It doesn't make us a, not a team player because here's what seals the deal. You suggest alternatives. I'd be happy to help you tomorrow or here's a dummy's guide that was really helpful or if you go online, there's this really cool template that can literally shave an hour off the process or, you know, we have on the interweb this, um, <laughs> I don't 
Did I just say the interwebs? <laughs> we have on our intranet <laughs> site. We have a, a template that has been really helpful for me, perhaps will be helpful for you. The thing with alternatives is you genuinely believe that they're going to help the person. You're generally willing to help them in the morning or when you're done with whatever you're doing later in the day. You genuinely believe that someone else might be able to assist them more effectively. The key with suggesting alternatives is that it's not your responsibility to come up with an alternative they will actually like. It's your responsibility to come up with a, an in good faith alternative. Because I promise you, in the heat of the moment, there is no alternative that they're going to be happy about. The only one they want is you saying yes. But when you suggest alternatives, it shows your concern. It makes you a team player. Now, I recognize that there are going to be plenty of times when people will come up to you and they're going to need your assistance and you're going to figure out that, hey, what they're talking about is really important and it is a bigger thing than whatever else you were working on. And you will willingly shift your schedule in order to accommodate them. I am not suggesting that you only do your plan for the day and never modify in order to help a team member, especially if, if it's someone who's achieving a goal or objective that will help the entire team succeed. I am suggesting, though, that when you are between a rock and a hard place, when you know that if you say yes, everything's going to come crashing down, you now have some tools to do it with tact and finesse. So you don't feel guilty. You don't sound like someone who's mean, rude, and nasty, and you still come across as a team player. By the way, practice is on your kids, so it gets a lot easier in the workplace. I know you want the expensive tennis shoes. We won't be buying them today because they're not in the family budget. You may spend X amount. There it is. There's the saying no template with the request. Now, some of you are thinking, you don't know my kids. They'll just keep asking. Well, just repeat. Repeat this process. We won't be buying them today. They're too expensive. You don't have to repeat the whole thing. You can repeat the decline and the reasons. You can just repeat the decline, or you can repeat the whole thing. You can do it until the kid finally figures out, oh, well, mom or dad says no. They mean no. The most important thing in a situation where you need to repeat is whatever it is you do, do not change your reason. Because the moment you start changing your reason, they think they might be able to get you to change your mind. Practice saying no so that you don't find yourself overwhelmed with too much to do because you uh, did not know how to stick to your plan.